Here we have the UNC Air Jordan 1 Low OG. So let's go ahead and start unboxing this shoe and see what these things are talking about. You got your classic OG style Air Jordan 1 box, all black with the red Nike branding throughout on the upper. And the size tag reads Air Jordan 1 Retro Low OG, white, dark, powder, blue, black, size 13, just for me. And retail on these things is 130 bucks. Now lifting open the lid right here, you got your classic white paper, and then you got the shoe. Oh, you got the shoe. Okay, first impressions of this sneak. The leather feels solid. Honestly, these ain't that bad. And by the way, if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ and this is the DNA show. Hey! Now let's go ahead and start breaking down this shoe and talking about all the styles, cuts, and materials. But before we do that, we gotta talk about the comparison sneaker. And that's the Travis Fragment Air Jordan 1 Low OG. Now some people might be saying, why are you comparing these two shoes? There's like a $2,000 price difference. But if you look at the color blocking on these two shoes, especially on the inside of the foot, they look pretty similar. So throughout the video, I'll be popping in different images and talking about slight comparisons as we go but for now let's go ahead and start breaking these down starting with the bottom of the shoe looking at the outsole right here you have your classic air jordan one bottom i love this hit right here and you got that powder blue all throughout and then you got a pure white midsole with a white stitch and then on to the upper this is giving you something similar to a toe color blocking style and when we talk about materials i feel like they did a really good job on these and typically on all the og air jordan one lows when it comes to the material quality of the leathers i've seen a pretty good job on all of them now when it comes to retro lows that's that's a different topic. If you guys want to see the comparison between retro lows and OG lows, I made a video about that on the channel before. So if you ever want to check that out, I'll make sure I have that link for you guys down below in the description. But anyways, back to the rest of the shoe right here. There's definitely a lot of subtle but clean hits on this shoe. I know a lot of people get very used to seeing the Royal Blues on a lot of Air Jordans. And don't get me wrong, I would love to see the Royal OG Air Jordan 1 low come back out again. We saw that retro in the past. A lot of people slept on it. Next thing you know, the shoe is going for like $800 and everybody's like, bro, this is ridiculous. And because of that, there has been a lot of demand on the recent OG retros that have been coming out over the past couple of years. But this one is quite surprising when it comes to pricing and people's opinions if the shoe is fire or trash or not, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the video. So like I was saying earlier, there are definitely some similarities when you look, especially on the inside of the foot. Now on the back end, you have black and then blue compared to all blue. And then you got the different branding and the sale compared to the pure white. But overall, there is definitely some similarities, especially if it was to the untrained sneakerhead eye, they're probably just just think hey the shoes are the same why is there such a price difference which i'm sure a lot of you guys understand why it's a collaboration it's more limited all the different things and then there's a lot more hype naturally because of demand you name it we get that part but i'm definitely very interested to see how many people that either got the travis fragments or didn't get the travis fragments wanted to get these or decided not to get these because they had the other ones from the past or wanted to get them or whatever so let me know your whole perspective of people comparing these to that shoe and everything like that as well because they're definitely similar in a way. I know the color is a little bit different, but the color blocking is similar. So I can understand why that would be a topic of discussion. Now, when it comes to the rest of the details on this shoe right here, these come with a pair of standard black flat laces. You have a black mesh tongue, a black tab with the powder blue Nike Air branding just above that. And then you have a black sock liner right here and a white insole with the powder blue Nike Air. And these also come with the shoelaces. It's actually embossed kind of in here. It has a jump man and it says shoelaces right here. And it's in a cardboard pack package compared to the plastic package. So if you look at the back of the package right here, you see it says move to zero, which is something we have seen a lot from Nike and Jordan brand with them trying to push to create more sustainable products. So it's dope to see them introduce this element, even when it comes to adding the shoelaces and it kind of gives it a little bit more premium of a vibe as well. So now when you come inside of here, you're going to have the powder blue laces that go with the color of the upper. And honestly, they look really, really similar. I think it would look clean in here, but for me, I would probably go with like a sail lace or a black lace and typically when i lace my shoes i always just go with the kind of standard lace that was already put in there i never really take the time to actually switch them out so let me know what you think about that as well would you switch the laces up would you go for white or sale laces i would love to hear down below in the comment section also if you're enjoying any of this video don't forget to hit that subscribe button in the post notifications we're on the road to a million subscribers and you could be the next one to get us there so now when it comes to the resale value on this sneaker honestly i'm pretty surprised we have the travis fragment which is going for like a couple thousand dollars and then you look at this shoe right here and they're literally going for like 20 or 30 bucks over the retail price and honestly I think that's a great deal because now even if you missed out on the shoe and weren't able to cop for retail you're now having a chance to be able to get the shoe for just a little bit over retail and not really have to worry about breaking the bank spending you know 350 400 bucks on a pair of shoes that just retailed at $130 so for me I think it's a great cop I think these can go well in the fall and winter time as well especially if you got jeans that kind of drape over the back end and you only see the front end right here and give you 
that OG cut with the black in front. Especially, even if you look at like this part of the shoe just on the front end, everybody loves Panda Dunks, right? So the black and white color blocking goes with a lot of different things. I think this is gonna be a very universal sneaker. A lot of people like the neutral grays. We just had the black and navy blue. Jordan ones come out recently with the OG lows. So a lot of those different sneakers and people just using these as everyday rockers. I think being able to cop these for around 150 bucks is honestly a really good deal. And I think over time, yes, the price will go up. How much will it go up? I don't know. The market right now is very, very interesting. But maybe in a couple years, this could be that $270, $325 sneaker. I don't know. We shall see. It might take three to five years from now, but I don't know. Again, let me know what you guys think down below when it comes to price projections in the future. Now, besides all that, for my people that just love the sneaker and just want to have the shoe in their collection like me, I'm thinking like, bro, this shoe is fire. I'm excited to be able to cop these for retail. And if I were to vote on a pole, fire, or trash, I would definitely say fire. But you guys know me. I always love to do the same thing on my IG story. Post the poll, see what everybody says so if you haven't already make sure you follow me on ig so you can participate in those and see all the results here on the channel this is what the people said 89 percent of the people said fire and 11 percent of the people said trash so one thing about that right there is essentially 90 percent that's an a grade right there if you were to do you know school grades or whatever but or b plus whatever some people might say it was 89 it's technically not a either way a minus whatever you want to call it at the end of the day a lot of people like this shoe and i think it's dope to see a sneaker that a lot of people like they love it appreciate it and it's not just reselling for some crazy price and it's something that's more affordable more attainable and that's more universal that rocks with a lot of different outfits so i was excited to pick up this sneaker i was excited to show you guys this sneaker and i'm excited to hear you guys a story about this sneaker whether you copped it or not what you decided to do how you feel about it in the future in the past and what type of outfit you like to wear with it i'd love to hear it all down below in the comment section and i'll see y'all in another one Yo, if you enjoyed this video and want to grow your collection or make extra money on the side, I built a VIP mastermind that will teach you everything that I've learned about growing my sneaker collection over the past 15 years. This will also give you access to the DNA fam in my VIP community where we talk about investing outside of sneakers. And don't worry, if you don't plan on joining the VIP community, it's okay. I also set up a private DNA fam community that gives you access to all the behind the scenes looks from the studio and multiple chances to win free sneakers and gear from weekly and monthly challenges so all you need to do is click on the link down below in the description or the first link pinned in the comment section that will get you set up and into the community i'm excited to see you guys on the inside Yo, if you made it to the end of this video, drop a comment down below and let me know what is your favorite low top OG Air Jordan 1 colorway that has come out in the past few years. For me, I'm still rocking with the neutral gray one lows. I'll be rocking those way too much.